that, we will get started. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Jeff, I know the decision to, to reset is, is never an easy one. Just talk about what was the strategy behind it and, and how you came to the decision to make the moves you made yesterday. Uh, yeah, well, um, it obviously is a, a, a major decision for the organization, and it, we don't take that lightly. Uh, weeks, months, you know, of discussing this stuff. Um, but, you know, we didn't set out on this path when we came into the season. You know, we, 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 we felt that we would be a playoff team this season for the third straight year. Um, I actually thought we could be a home court team. And, and it's funny, now that I see the way the season's playing out in the East, I, I'm even more uh, of that mind that, that we could have been a home court team. And, um, and this could be the year that we kind of advance in the playoffs. Um, you know, and we started out, uh, I think, six and two. But you know, stuff happens, right? And so uh, we we got we got punched in the nose by um, literally uh, a historic an NBA historic wave of injuries, and so that changes everything. It changes uh, it changes the way that the team um, has to plan. It changes the season. It changes beyond the season, and it changes the mindset. So. You know, in this business, you have to constantly be able to pivot. You have to stay fluid as, as much as possible. And it's not easy to try to, to walk two paths, but that's what we've been trying to do. And we went into this uh, trade deadline um, with the uh, dual tasks of trying to improve our team or trying to look for opportunities to restart it. And um, when these uh, opportunities presented themselves, we felt that in conjunction with one another, they presented us uh, a really exciting new path to take. And um, that's what we did. And so we're on a new path now and I'm really excited about where we're headed. And I think that this is uh, gonna be a great new start for the team and that there are great things ahead of us. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Jeff, uh, do you think that get, uh, receiving two players back, two lightly protected first round picks, is enough of a return for a two-time All-Star who has two full seasons remaining on his contract? Well, obviously, Josh, you know, no deals are made in a vacuum. And, and let, let me first say that, um, you know, we wish Vooch nothing but the best. Uh, and, and I know that all three of those guys are gonna have success. They're, they're all very good players. They're all very good people. And they're gonna have a lot of success with their new teams. And, and, and that's what we hope for them. And that's what we expect for them. Um, obviously we thought it was enough because we did the deal, but I, I would say this, that, you know, we got two first round picks, which are very, very coveted assets, um, in today's NBA. And someone said to me after the, after the dust had settled that there were only three first round picks conveyed yesterday and they were all conveyed to the Orlando magic. Um, and we also got Wendell Carter, who's, uh, uh, you know, a, a soon to be 22 year old, um, young um, developing player who's on a, a rookie contract and has his whole career to unfold in front of him. So those are three very significant, um, you know, NBA assets. And I hate to call players assets because, you know, players are, are, are players. And, and Wendell is supposed to be, by all accounts, a remarkable person. And uh, uh, so we're really excited about that trade. And, and to be able to turn Vooch, who, uh, you know, is going to play at age 31 next year and have two years remaining on his contract into three assets that will remain with us, you know, for years and, 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 and have flexibility and, and, and give us all the, the optionality that we, that we now possess going forward um, was, uh, was a good trade for us, we believe. So while we wish, wish Vooch the best, we're really excited to bring in Wendell. And, and obviously that trade was done in conjunction with others and we've completely reset our cap flexibility, our list of assets, and we now have uh, enough uh, arrows in the quiver where we can strike out on multiple paths. Tim Reynolds, Associated Press. Good morning, Jeff, how are you? Hi, Tim. Um, Jeff, there are 30 teams and 30 teams run their business 30 different ways. The mm -hmm. one consistent trend in this league is very few of you tend to be patient. Uh, you're embarking on a process that will require it. How difficult, I know it's tough to forecast because you're only in day two, but how difficult will that be to accept that this is not 
and overnight. This is not a quick fix. Well, I think that that the fans that follow us closely know that that you know we are a team that has been patient. We we will be patient, and we believe in continuity. Um, so we will not put a timeline on anything. We will do this the right way as we always do, and we will use every avenue at our disposal to improve our team. And, and I've said from the day I got here, we're looking to build a sustainable winning team. And I'm very excited about where we are right now because I think we've put ourselves in a position to uh, you know, deal from a position of strength. You know, It's hard, it's hard when you're on the phone and you're backed up against the tax and your contracts are expiring and your guys are getting older. And you know, th those, those are not good places to deal from when you're um, trying to move your team forward. So we're now in a position of much greater flexibility and uh, I won't put a timeline on it, but I can say that we have um, a lot of different ways to improve and, and we'll have to obviously look for partners as we go and, and figure out how that looks. Okay, Brandon Kravitz, 96.9 the game. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to say what everybody says. You would think we'd have, have that figured out by now. Um, you said that you were confident that if everything went right this year, if the team remained healthy, you had Fultz, you had Isaac, that this is a team that not only would make the playoffs, but possibly could even host playoff games as a, a, a home team. Um, how hard is it to then pivot when you felt so confident that this team would be good enough to compete next year? What went into that thinking is where next year uh, you were going to be able to compete, but instead you, you pull the plug. Well, you know, I've said this before, but, you know, this, this ain't fantasy league, you know. Um, it's not a matter of because we would have done it this year, this happens next year, you know. Contracts get shorter, players get older, financial situations get more compressed. You don't get to just run it back. So you know, it's our jobs to keep our fingers on the pulse of the team, understand where their mindset is. These are very, very competitive, ambitious athletes who want to win, and they have a short window to do it. And when you face what we face this season, it changes the complexion. It changes the complexion. So you don't just get to hit like the reset button and say, well, we'll just do it again next year. Uh, you guys know that financially we were, we were going to be in a tight spot. It, we, we probably couldn't bring back the exact same team, even had we desired to. And so you've got to stay fluid. You've got to be able to pivot. And so I don't look at it as being a hard decision. I look at it as being the right decision. And you have to be detached enough to understand how we're positioned today, how we're positioned going forward, how fragile we are, what our margin is. So I could say like, well, if we could patch it together and bring it back, but one injury and boom, we're right back to where we are again. And now Vooch is gonna be 32 the following year and, and, and AG's on an expiring contract. So these are all things that you have to factor in. And frankly, um, you know, our, our, our plan had been to build on that team, get, get, get a playoff uh, series victory under our belt and, and grow from there. Um, but, but in all, in all candor, we have to also um, accept the fact that, you know, um, that our core was aging, the, the contracts were shortening, and ultimately, was this a team that was going to win a championship? We had to ask ourselves that question. And I feel today that we've put ourselves in a position to, obviously, we're going to go through a rebuild. I will not put a timetable on how that's going to look. We're going we're to uh, look at deals as they come. We're going we're to uh, go after players as they come, become available. But I do believe we're in a position, given our flexibility, given the abundance of assets that we now have at our disposal, given the reset of our timeline of our players, that we can start to think about um, um, how we can build this out towards winning a title. Jamie Say, WKMG TV. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Um, Hi, Jamie. You mentioned that uh, you know these guys are competitive and they want to win. Now, I'm just wondering, did Vooch ever go to you? Um, and uh, express any kind of frustration or um, did he ever go to you asking uh, for a different scenario? Well, Jamie, um, you know, I would never disclose, uh, you know, private conversations between, you know, um, myself and any of our players. Uh, but I, I will say this though, you know, it is our job to keep our fingers on the pulse of the team. And, um, 
I, I do I do believe that uh, given what we've gone through this year with the injuries and just the the nature of the injuries, you know, this is this isn't just one injury; it's a bunch of them, and it's not just like a a, a small injury; it's a bunch of significant injuries. And what that does to the to the team, and obviously you're 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 looking through a prism of absorbing all these losses. And and you know, Vuce is 30; he's going to be 31 next year when he plays. And so um, all of the guys, all of the guys, I think there was a feeling of, you know, is it getting a little stagnant, you know, and, 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 you know, no one, no one, I would say uh, uh, would, 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 I'm not going to divulge those sorts of, you know, uh, uh, private conversations, but I think the overriding sense that we were kind of getting was a sense of frustration and, um, I think uh, that 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 factored in a little bit to our decision making, but ultimately it's our job to understand the, the mindset of our team, um, um, and 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 pull back from that, and then weigh all of the different elements that we're facing and the timelines that we're facing, and try to do what's best for our fans, what's best for our organization, in our goal to win an NBA championship. Philip Rossman Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Hey Jeff, um, this is sort of a two-part question. First, um, what, how are Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz it, it, going along in their recovery process, and how much did you know that progress or, or where you think they are and where they will be for next year kind of play into this decision to hit the reset button and, and sort of turn you know make, turn the franchise over to them as kind of the only long-standing contracts left on the on the team. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys know I never put timetables on injuries, and, and obviously I can tell you this, they're in every day, and you, you, you who follow the team closely know what exceptional people they are and what exceptional workers they are, so they're getting after it. They're in every day, and, um, you know, smiles on their faces and, and you know, kind of looking forward to getting back. Um, that said, um, it's a good question, Philip, because, you know, these are significant injuries, and, you know, we won't, we won't put a timeline on it. They're going to get they're going to get back to full recovery. Um, but, you know, how exactly that looks, um, it's too soon to say the, the, the specifics of the timeline like that. And let's be honest, you know, Jonathan missed a season and, and then he played a short time and, and now he's going to miss another season. So, you know, that's another factor. So, um, you know, yeah, it is a good question because it does, it does um, enter into the math, right? This is, this is all just math at the end of the day and it enters into um, how, how we have to approach um, where we are, uh, a clear-eyed assessment of our team, of our immediate prospects, and what that means to our long-range prospects. So it's a, it's a really good question, and, it, and it, it does play into your decision-making. Okay, just a reminder, we will get to as many questions as possible, but uh, we do have a little bit of a time limit. Um, we will go to Aaron Goldstone, Pinstripe Post. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning. Um, in the Evan Fournier deal, uh, your team received uh, two future second round picks and created a traded player exception. Mm -hmm. What, how do you feel about that return from Boston? And is it safe to say, I guess the prize of that deal would be the, the traded player exception you created. Um, how could you use that to the team advantage, you know, creating flexibility moving forward? Um, well, without drilling too deep into the mechanics, you know, traded player exception can be a very valuable asset. As we saw yesterday, the Boston Celtics were able to acquire Evan Fournier. Um, so um, that being said, you know, Evan was on an expiring contract. So, you know, Evan, Evan will play for them for two months and then he'll be an unrestricted free agent. They will have his bird rights. And we were in a position coming into the season where we valued Evan's bird rights because Evan's a good player and he's a good guy. And um, to be able to, so bird rights for, for you know, you, you, you can sign a guy beyond your exceptions with bird rights. So, um, so as we looked at what we were doing in the larger scheme of yesterday, we felt that uh, it didn't make any sense to, to make, you know, those other two trades and not move Evan. So at that point, once we struck out on this path, the theory, the thinking is that let's get what we can for Evan. And, um, you know, two second round picks, you never know. They'll, they'll always have value. They have asset value. Um, and, and the trade exception could be um, of significant value, but you never know. We'll see, we'll see what it becomes. But obviously, as players move along in their contracts and have less time remaining, 
um, they become less valuable to, to the receiving team. And by the way, that's not just true of Evan. The clock is ticking on all those guys. So when you talk about AG, when you talk about Vooch, right? And you talk about like, well, we'll just push it back to next year. Well, next year, they don't have the same value to other teams, you know? And, um, and so, so these are all factors that come in. You know, the one thing about this league, it doesn't stand still, you know? And, and the clock is ticking, you know? And so um, when you see a chance to strike and feel that deals are lining up, you know, and, and it's not easy to line up multiple deals in one cycle, um, you know, I, I think that you have to act. And that's what we did. Okay, Pat Welter, Spectrum Sports. Morning, Jeff. Um, you talk about assets. You got a pretty valuable one here in this year's draft pick. Got a chance to maybe land a number one pick, top five pick. How pivotal is landing a star with that pick to the success of this rebuild? You know, I mean, that's 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 how um, you know NBA titles are won. You know, you know, you don't win titles without stars, and uh, obviously. Um, we're not going to be worried about our draft pick right now. We're worried about the young guys on our roster and putting them in a, in a, in a position to succeed and, and, and for us to evaluate them and kind of learn them and how we can best help them grow and develop. Uh, but clearly, you know, um, top five picks in this league are probably the most coveted asset of all. And, uh, you know, we'll see how we finish the season. We're, we're going to try to be organized. We're going to try to win games. But you know, you're right. Right now, we, we, we do sit in a position where we're going to be, um, I don't know, probably uh, uh, significant uh, players in, in, in the lottery if, if, if it were to be frozen today. And uh, we'll see what that brings. You know, we're not going to put eggs in the basket of, of something that we have no control over, right? You know, those are, those are ping pong balls and those are, you know, random odds and, and you know, it's, it's, it's luck. And you, know, you never like to uh, um, just cast your fortune to that. That said, that said, you know, there are certain percentages played uh, in the lottery and, and, you know, we'll, we'll see where that goes, but that's, that's months away. We're not thinking about that right now. Um, right now it's about um, onboarding our new guys, letting our coaching staff get their arms around them. And, 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 you know, we're really excited about our two young guys and, and, and uh, you know, what they can do for us. And by the way, the two uh, veteran players that we brought in too are, league wide known to be just, you know, tremendous people, leaders, um, kind of the, the, the perfect vet guys that you want uh, around around a program that we're that we're building now. Okay. Keith Smith, Yahoo. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Um, how do you see RJ Hampton fitting in uh, with Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony? in the backcourt, do you think those three guys can eventually get to a point where they can be on the floor together at times and, and form a partnership as your new backcourt? Well, the first thing is I think they can all play together, you know, and then uh, beyond that, you know, yeah, the way the league is trending these days, there are often three guard lineups and RJ's, uh, you know, um, um, you know, a, a big rangy athletic kid. And, and so, you know, can you can you kind of play small with those three? I think there there may be times, but you know, uh, I'll let I'll let Cliff worry about that. And I think that's probably a, a more down the road discussion uh, where where we get to know you know RJ a little bit. And 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 look, even Cole, what's Cole played like fifteen games? I mean, so so um, you know, we'll get to know these guys. You know, they, they're both both very very hardworking, talented, competitive. 20 year olds, you know, so, so, um, you know, I, I think our fans are going to really be excited by RJ and, uh, you know, RJ is a multi-position player. He's a, he's a, he's a two-way player. He's going to be a high level defender. Um, he's got length and athleticism and speed. And um, he's a, he's a great worker. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that the one thing that we did assess, I don't know about all playing at the same time, maybe in today's NBA. Yeah. But for sure, they can all play together. And that's the most important thing is that there's no combination that you can say, like, well, we can't put these two guys on the floor in the backcourt. OK, uh, James Hill, Black News Channel. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the new direction you're going in uh, in terms of uh, Wendell and certainly has he has a tremendous upside 
do you see him as a, a cornerstone? And then also um, just the fact that uh, it's, it's a new era in Magic Basketball, and we had some success with the uh, ball club that, you know, kind of changed yesterday. Uh, they went to the playoffs a couple of times. But going forward, uh, can you talk about just the, the outlook and Wendell? Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, let me first say that, um, you know, uh, look, at, look, at, look at the Orlando Magic. Shaq and Dwight, the two, the two teams that made it to the finals, you know, were, 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 were number one picks and, and those were teams that were built through the draft. And so, um, you know, look, we've given ourselves a chance now to, I think, raise our ceiling and it's going to take time. We've got to make good decisions. We've got to remain disciplined. Um, but I believe that, that we're on a path now where we can, we can dream big. And it's great that we made the playoffs the last couple of years. And as I said, I believe we could have been a home court team this year, but we have to be honest about the timeline of that team and, and the ceiling of that team. And so I think it was important when we got here for a team that, that, that had been struggling to make the playoffs and have success and show our young guys what that looks like. And we've done that. And now the time has come to make this move. So I'm really excited to be on this path. And, and there's a little bit of, uh, you know, swimming upstream is good in this league, you know, when you're doing stuff that other guys aren't. And, and, and I think yesterday was a day where there were uh, fewer sellers than in typical years. We assessed the market to be that way. And so that's why we felt we were able to get good deals done. Um, and, and again, really excited to be in this position today. I think there's a new kind of fresh wind blowing through the organization and, and we're armed with a lot of, a lot of different ways and, and means to improve this team significantly as we go forward. Some of which you guys have already alluded to. Um, as to Wendell, look, man, Wendell's not 22 yet. You know, he's, he's an incredibly hard worker. He's a team oriented guy. He's selfless by all accounts. I can't tell you some of the glowing uh, Intel reports that we, that we put together in the last week or two on him. Um, uh, and, and, and he's, he's a burgeoning player, man. He's, he's, he's got all the tools that you look for in, in a modern big. And, um, and so, you know, we're just really excited to have him and get to know him and put him in a position to succeed. All right. Thanks, Roy Jeff. Good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Morning, Jeff. Hey, Roy. Just wondering if, um, like, a when did you realize, or at what point did you did you get to when you realized this was the this was the path you guys were going to go down, and, and and also maybe what would be your your message to fans at this point? Uh, well, I mean, my, my message to fans is clear. I think this is this is a great day to be a Magic fan. You know, we we wish we wish our our three guys the very very best, and 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 I know they're going to have success because they're all good players and they're going to you know, some teams that are already good and some that are growing and will be better. And uh, I know they're going to be good, but we're on a different path now. And our path is really exciting. And I think our path gives us upside and it gives us uh, a really bright future. So that's my message to the fans. Um, uh, uh, as to when did we know we were going to do the deal? You know, I, I say, I know that it seems like we were busier than most years this year. I, I, and I will get back to that. We were, but we're, we're always we're always act aggressive. We're always aggressive. It just doesn't seem that way because you might not be active. You know, we, we put in the same amount of work every cycle, every draft, every trade line, but sometimes you don't make a deal and it's like, well, they're just sitting on their hands. Like, no, we're not sitting on our hands. We're working, but the deals just didn't line up. This one was particularly busy because we were actually working on double path deals and we were having discussions about improving our team now and kind of like pushing more chips up. And we were also having discussions about this. Now, we were hoping that these discussions would come through, but if they didn't, you know, we, we knew that we didn't want to just sit still. So these deals came through um, in a way that we were excited about. And to, to line up three of them on one day, um, you know, took a lot of work. And I want to say thanks to, to, to all of our people. They did an amazing job. And it, I have to say it was doubly difficult this year with COVID restrictions. And, you know, John and Matt and I were, went to the NCAA tournament for a week. So we were all uh, spread out a little bit and we were doing, you know, 
midnight to two in the morning Zooms every night to kind of like regroup and talk about what, what information we had gathered from teams and where we were with deal points. And so it was particularly challenging, but I thought the process that we, uh, that we worked with this year was, was, was really functional. And, and, and it got us to a place where the day of the deadline yesterday, when we walked in, we felt that we had three deals that could really be executed. And, um, you know, we were just really happy to be able to do that. Okay, we have time for just a couple more. We're going to go uh, robparks48minutes.com. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Um, I know you talked about RJ Hampton already. Um, I want to I want to talk about Gary Harris for a minute because I know he can get buckets. I feel like that's a slept-on um, pickup for you guys. Yeah, thanks, Rob. You know, I, I, that that's great. I tried to, like, work that in a little bit earlier. But, yeah, listen, man, like Gary and Otto, you guys know these are two highly respected NBA veterans, you know, on the court and off the court. And, and you guys will see pretty quickly just their level of professionalism and, 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 and example setting and messaging. And by the way, they're both really excited to be here. And, and so, yeah, so to your point, look, man, Gary Harris is a good player. You know, think about this. Otto Porter is on a $28 million contract. Gary Harris makes 21 next year. You don't get those if you can't play. You know, these guys are good players and they're great people and they're excited to be here. And, uh, you know, Gary's, Gary's, you know, uh, an elite level wing defender in this league. And, um, you know, he's been hurt, but, you know, we got a, you know, we got a good one, you know, we got a good one and, and he's excited to be here. And um, so, so we look forward to, you know, his presence, you know, on the court, off the court and, you know, him being able to um, show what he can do. So I'm glad you asked that. I appreciate that. Uh, Cody. Cody Taylor, Rookie Wire USA Today. Hey, good morning, Jeff. Uh, you mentioned RJ a little bit earlier. How important was it to get a player of his caliber back in that deal? And, and what kind of communication did you have with him during the pre-draft process, if any? Yeah, uh, well, I can tell you it was extremely, as a matter of fact, we, the deal we had been discussing, um, you know, Denver was one of the teams that was interested in, in Aaron. And, um, and they were very reluctant to discuss RJ. And uh, it wasn't until a couple of days before the deadline that his name started to be included in discussions. And that was a pivot point for us. When that started happening, we, we, um, we kind of latched on to those conversations. Um, you know, we were one of a few teams that, that were able to go down to Texas and visit RJ during the draft process. Um, John and Matt and I went down. We were able to watch him work out. Um, we had a bite with him. And um, man, <laughs> you talk about impressive. I mean, I think RJ is a little under the radar because of his path. But you're talking about, you know, a top five high school player coming out who goes to New Zealand. So he's kind of off the radar, you know, the, 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 the typical NBA fan. And, um, and look, and he's a 19 year old playing with grown men, you know, um, and those leagues are, are hard, you know, you don't, you don't just walk into those places and, and dominate, you know, like the, 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 they're physical, those guys are rough and tumble, the games are called that way. And um, RJ had moments of, 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 you know, flashes of brilliance and, and, and some rough times, but he, he, he's, he comes back to, to the U S and, and he adds weight and he gets with his guys and he works with uh former Orlando Magic player, Mike Miller. <laughs> and um, and uh, so his shooting looks better and he had a really good workout and he is a, he's a, he's a really charismatic, smart, um, high energy kid. And uh, I, I think our fans are gonna really love him. And look, the guy's played 200 minutes in the NBA. So he's an unknown quantity, but he was a guy that, one of the guys in the draft that we had targeted that has, you know, potential, um, to far, far exceed the draft slot. And so I can't tell you how excited we are about him. And, and yeah, like the, the conversations with Denver definitely shifted when his name was included. And this is not a guy that they, that they happily move into this deal. All right, final question goes to Ryan Welch, WKMG. Good morning, Jeff. Um, a lot of franchises, you know, go through a deal, you know, a good deal of success, and then they might have to hit the reset button. The Orlando Magic have obviously been through a lot of lean years in recent years, notwithstanding the two playoff appearances. 
did that factor into the decision at all? Or do you have to just treat it as, look, this is our time here. We need to just do what's best for the franchise. It's a great question, Ryan. I would say this, it kind of factored in when we showed up. You know, I felt like the last thing that the fans wanted to hear was a new guy showing up with a new rebuild on the heels of the old rebuild. So at that time, you know, we did, we did, I think, uh, make that part of the evaluation process. Um, but now, you know, we're, we're a couple of years past that. We are a playoff team, you know, and I believe we would have been a playoff team again. And, and I believe that, you know, I hope that our fans have the trust in us that, that we, we know how to get there. Um, our, our players have grown up experiencing playoffs and um, now we're in a different place. You know, now, you know, um, you know, our players are older, the contracts are shorter. We're facing, you know, uh, um, you know, a, a wave of injuries that the league really hasn't ever seen before. And so, uh, yeah, like the, the math is a little different now than it was when we showed up, but that, that initially had been part of our, I think, calculations. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Again, Coach Clifford around.